Hey there, Leo. Welcome to part two for 2023, your yearly reading. Uh, part one is linked up down below if you haven't watched it yet. But we're going to jump right in here, Leo, and we are going to take a look at your fifth house of uh, romance, play, creativity, self-expression, uh, good fortune, things like that. You have this official part, uh, person card and this expectations card uh, coming up here. I feel like some of you could be becoming like an official person. And um, you know, it's funny that you have this fifth house card right here in your sixth house, which is the house of like a worker, your daily work. I do feel that things could be connected. These, you know, obviously these two houses are connected, but connected on a deeper level. Like you could be um, very focused on, um, you know, working on a passion project or working on a passion-based business. Maybe the business you have right now is a passion-based business. And look at this. This is a very good reading. I love this poised card. It says you're like ready for success. You're poised for success. You're about to become very successful. So I feel like there's definitely uh, like, you know, more success coming in for you, uh, obviously. Um, but I feel like there is something here about becoming like, I, I feel like kind of that the fifth house is a house of good luck or like good fortune, really. And the fortunes that you could be receiving are that you're like, you know, kind of bossing up here, or maybe you're getting some sort of, uh, you know, leadership role or um, some sort of recognition is kind of popping into my head as well, where you could be being seen as an expert, like if you have a business that's based off of a skill or something like that. So that's what I'd be working on if I were you, or that's what I'd be working towards at the very least. You have this expectation card. I think that's the one thing that's going to disappoint you this year. <laughs> so I would say, I always say it, but like no expectations in any area of your life. I feel like getting rid of all expectations would be a really good practice for you. I also feel like being very flexible this year would be a very good practice for you as well. Just thinking, you know, if, if something, to, if you come up with an idea, in love, business, work, your health, and it doesn't work, I would just be thinking like, okay, this didn't work, but like what will work, right? So I wouldn't just get, I wouldn't allow yourself to get disappointed by the expectations of your ideas, especially your creative ideas. I feel you could be having a lot of creative ideas this year that could lead to a lot of success, but it's like maybe not the first part of the idea. <laughs> it's like maybe you have an idea, you think it's a really good idea, you have these expectations, then you get disappointed when it doesn't work. I feel like this is saying like, have the idea, great, execute on it and look at what what part of it worked looked at look at what didn't work and like come up with more ideas after that it's like i feel like there are you know there's this energy of nurturing your ideas there's this energy of like iterating it's like your first idea might part the first part of it might not work but it's like if you keep coming up with different versions of the idea then that's what what will work for you i feel uh, especially in business i'm getting but i also feel this goes for all areas of your life you have the 3 of cups the hangman in the six of wands here. I see so much fun here for some reason. I mean, six of cups is a card of celebration, but you know, is it the most fun card in the tarot? I mean, probably not. And you know, it's a, it is a card of fun, but I'm not saying, I'm, I'm just saying it's not like the most fun, right? <laughs> and I see so many reasons for you to like celebrate, have fun. I'd make sure you're doing those things. I'd make sure you're socializing, uh, spending time with your community, with your friends. I think that's where you're really going to be kind of, um, you know, recharging your batteries, so to speak, or just finding a lot of happiness. I also do feel that for some of you, this could be romance returning to your life. I feel like saying returning to your life. I do not think it's a past person. I want to make that clear. Um, you know, some of you might already have romance in your life, but um, I feel like this is something you've been waiting for here with the hangman. Some of you could be dealing with a water sign or a Pisces. You have water. Uh, you have the queen of cups, water sign. Could also be an air sign as well. I would say even if it is a water sign, it's probably a water sign that has air some in an like important place in their chart. I'm getting 10th house for some reason, or it could be like their midheaven or something. Um, I don't know. That's what's popping into my head here, Leo. But <laughs> what I would say is, uh, regardless, I feel like you've been waiting. I feel like you've been making a lot of sacrifices. I feel like you've really been hoping to you know, find like a kind, caring, nurturing person as well with that queen of cups coming up right next to this hangman. I feel like this is a very good person. I do feel like they're very bold though. Like, you know, I kind of feel they're maybe, um, I kind of feel like I mean, this could be you. So take it how it resonates. You're a Leo. <laughs> so you could be the life of the party or I don't know, you could be attracting a person who's like gets a lot of attention or they're the life of the party. Um, again, the difference is I feel that if you're attracting this new romance that you've been waiting for, um, 
I don't think they're, they're not like a cheater or anything like that. You also have this six of wands here. So I would be expressing yourself. This is the house of self-expression. I feel like the way you express yourself could be changing, but it could also be leading to some victories or just positive attention. You know, the six of wands is just a card of happiness or a victory, really some sort of achievement. And you have a bunch of cards of achievement showing up in this reading. So uh, this definitely looks like a very good part of your sky. I would say that looking at the whole entire reading here, Leo, I do feel that your positive relationships are what you should be focusing on. Love and also just regular old, you know, friendships, family, all that other stuff, because it looks to me like you're going to be getting like a lot of the benefits of the energy this year from your positive relationships. Uh, with the Three of Cups, you have this revenge card. No, I, I, like... Uh, what's crazy is Aries had this card in exactly the same position, <laughs> which is weird. But what I would say is no revenge, no trying to get revenge. I also feel if you're thinking about love that, you know, you could be, if you want love, let's say, and but you're still thinking about past love, it's not really revenge, but I do feel it could be the thing that is keeping you stuck. It's like you're staying stuck in the past. So uh, that's not going to be true for all of you, obviously, only some of you. I do feel it's saying let it go so that you can attract this new person in. With the hangman, you have this extremism card. Uh, again, this could be a past person. I do feel that, you, you, you know, two cards of Scorpio, like hold on to the past, right? <laughs> Here, at Leo. So it could also be a past person who can't let you go. I would just, you know, block and move on. I would put up boundaries. I would, you know, do whatever you need to do to get rid of this person because, I don't know, they're clearly showing up in your energy. Uh, with the six of wands, you have the idealism card. Yeah, I feel like you're attracting like the ideal partner here. It, you know, could be an Aquarius, by the way, sound an Aquarius on this card. But, you know, I feel like you could be attracting a person who is just like kind of like a real ideal partner, someone who really wants to work with you, be with you, like all those other good things. You know, are they perfect? No, but, you know, I don't know. I feel like they could be good. <laughs> so I would go for it, Leo. Uh, next in your um, sixth house, this is going to confuse me because... You have the fifth house and you have the seventh house, literally both sides of this reading. Seventh house says relationships on it, obviously. Fifth house says passions. So your sixth house is your house of like work, uh, self-improvement, health, your daily routine, things like that. And so both of these things clearly are going to be having an effect on your work. We kind of already talked about this in your first row. And kind of what I'm feeling is as long as you're in positive relationships, your life is going to be going really well. I also think your work life is going to be going well. I've even noticed in my life, you know, not to toot my own horn here, but in my life, it's like if I have a positive relationship in love, then things go really well. If it's a negative relationship, things don't go well. <laughs> so I feel like you need to like pay attention to like what relationships are doing to your life. Are they making things better or worse? And pay attention to that. Uh, I definitely feel like working on passion thing, things that you're passionate about obviously is going to make you very successful this year. So if you already have a passion-based business, then things could be going well. If you already work in a business that you know, if you have a job or a career that's based off of a passion, then I think things will go really well. You have the King of Swords, the Queen of Cups, and the Eight of Pentacles. Again, King of Swords really tells me that some of you are like becoming an expert in work, or maybe you're just kind of like taking it to the next level where like there's some sort of change that I see here where it's like you really taking things to the next level. <laughs> this could be you like upgrading your business in a big way. And by doing that, it could be making you seem like more of an expert. And this is a good thing, obviously. Uh, you could be, this could be at work. You could be getting more attention from your bosses or mentors and they're seeing you as an expert. So they're paying you more money or something. I'm not getting any of the typical like King of Swords stuff here. I'm getting more that this is like you leveling up or, you know, you getting a raise, even though that's not what the King of Swords represents. But again, I read intuitively. That's what I'm getting here is that you're kind of being because like this is almost like a side effect, right? Of the work that you do, the King of Swords, because you're being seen as an expert, because you, um, know what you're talking about. It's almost like you're being proven right as well. For those of you, um, I don't know, maybe you read tarot <laughs> on YouTube and you're being proven right. Uh, maybe you do something else that has to be proven right. And I kind of feel like you're, it's almost like you're backing up your skills by being proven right. I hope that makes sense. And if you're doing that, uh, clearly there's going to be money coming in, eight of pentacles. Eight of Pentacles to me is material success on the horizon. I feel like just like mostly else, I feel like you've just been working and, you know, putting the work in kind of like head down, nose to the grindstone uh, type of energy here on the Eight of Pentacles. And I feel like the money is finally catching up. That's what I feel like saying. Some of you money maybe has been perfectly fine for a long time, but 
you know, I feel like it could always be better. Who doesn't want more, right? Anyone who claims they don't want more is lying, <laughs> plain and simple. And uh, what I would say here is I feel like there could be more coming in for you because the money, uh, I feel like saying money is catching up. That's really the words that are popping into my head. Um, also, really good card for health, by the way, six house health. So, you know, anything you can do to work on your health, to improve your health, I feel would be a really good idea with this card. Uh, you have the Queen of Cups here. Again, some of you could be meeting a person through work. Another card of health, by the way, Queen of Cups, she really like takes care of how she feels. So making sure that you feel good and making sure that you do things that make you feel good is gonna be very important with the Queen of Cups. So I would make sure to nurture yourself, care for yourself, take care of yourself. But I also do feel some of you could be meeting a person through work. Doesn't matter what gender, by the way, they are, but I feel like they're showing up as a Queen of Cups. Could be very intuitive, could be a water sign. Doesn't have to be though. I'm like getting everything here. You have everything here, a lot of air as well. Also Virgo, uh, you know, you just have a lot of stuff in general. So it could be anything, but I feel like they are very kind, caring, nurturing. I feel like they really are kind of like very affectionate as well. I'm getting here as well, which I don't know. I think Leo likes that. So <laughs> go for it, Leo. Uh, let's see here what we have coming up for you. With the uh, King of Swords, you have this drama card. No drama here. Get out of this type of Leo energy, right? I would avoid the drama at all cost. I wouldn't even feed into drama at all, period. If you have a business, by the way, um, if there are people who cause drama, I would get rid of those people. I feel a very strong need to protect the energy of the things that you're building. Some people, there are just some people who just like to cause problems, right? And that's what I'd be avoiding here overall. Uh, with the Queen of Cups, you have this criticism card. No criticizing at all, period, this year as well. For some of you, this could be a past person. There's like a past person who could be trying. I don't want to scare you. I don't like delivering these messages. F quite frankly, I feel like these types of messages get overused because they get views, clearly, right? So, you know, I don't usually deliver messages like this, but what I would say is there could be a past person who's trying to cause drama. I would like, you know, block, move on, or do whatever you got to do to make sure someone from the past isn't causing drama. Uh, I would also be careful of like, you know, criticizing your ideas. <laughs> like I said earlier, I feel you could have ideas. I, I think you need to realize that like the first thing you do isn't gonna work and, and that's fine, right? It's like me, I'm like, you know, I fell on my head when I was 10 years old. I always say like, if I read a book, I have to read it like 20 times b before it even comes close to sinking in. If I learn something new, I have to learn it like 20 times before it even sinks in, right? Um, and if I have an idea, it, do it doesn't work. I have to do it like 10 times before it works. So don't be afraid to fail is what I feel like this is saying. Don't criticize yourself. Don't criticize your ideas. They're not bad ideas. They're probably really good ideas. But, you know, I, like I've been there. I've lived it my whole entire life, basically, since I was 10 years old I, when I fell on my head, right? It's like I've lived it, the, uh, the thought of like, oh my God, this is the best idea ever. And then it doesn't work, right? <laughs> so, but what I had to teach myself is to keep going past that point. It, like usually it is a good idea. I just didn't do it the right way the first time. So, you know, I would say don't criticize yourself here. With the Eight of Pentacles, you have this empathy card. I would make sure you're having empathy for people in your life in general. I'm not saying that you wouldn't. I just think it would be a good thing to practice with that Eight of Pentacles and um, also like not criticizing. You know, I think one of the quickest ways to ruin a relationship is criticism, criticizing each other, right? Obviously. And so I feel like this is saying, you know, practice empathy and not criticism of a partner. Some of you, you know, I feel like there could be, if you're not already in a really good relationship, there could be one coming in for you. And maybe there are things where you're like, <laughs> that was stupid. But again, I would be careful of getting into that, you know, criticizing each other type of thing here, if you can help it. Uh, next in the area of your relationships. And don't criticize yourself either, is what I would say here. But in the your seventh house of relationships, you have the building box card, amazing. And that you have this poised card as well, also amazing. You know, this is a card of being poised and ready for sex. You, uh, I just said sex. Uh, ready, maybe you're ready for sex, who knows? But uh, also po poised for success is what I wanted to say. So uh, what I would say here is that there is clearly love coming in for you. You have the four wands, which is marriage. So you could be, poised for success and being successful in your life, but you're clearly building towards something much better. If you don't have love in your life, I mean, you have the four of pentacles, eight of cups, and the four of wands, marriage. Four of pentacles to me says you're probably, you know, I, I feel like you need to make sure that you're leaving comfort zones with the four of pentacles. Four of pentacles could say if you're having a hard time finding love, like you could be, it could be your location, honestly. I mean, you have the eight of cups here. It's like, if you live in a town where there's only, uh, you know, the population is like 15, then, you know, obviously you probably know everyone that you could date and you probably know everything about their business as well. So it's like, you know, maybe you need to move. Maybe you need to move somewhere where there's more people, right? <laughs> That's definitely for some of you out there, or maybe you just need to move. 
with the Eight of Cups especially. For others, again, I feel like maybe you need to leave a comfort zone. Maybe you need to shoot your shot if you're interested in a person. I would just go for it with this Four of Pentacles. Uh, you know, maybe you need to do something you've never done before, like a hobby. Or maybe you need to do uh, take a class based off of something that you're interested in, right? It's like we're not going to find people sitting on our couch. And we're also probably, you know, I keep encouraging people to be on Tinder. Like if you're looking for love, I always tell people, it's like if you're looking for love and you're not on Tinder or you're not on Bumble or you're not on some dating site, then you're crazy because... You're basically telling the universe, no, I don't want love, it, you know, as I always say, because we have to use everything at our disposal. We have to be in the energy of someone who actually finds what they're looking for. So, you know, by being on a dating site, then you're going to find it. People always tell me, I don't want to be on Tinder. I'm like, you don't actually have to date the people. Just be on it because then you're proving to the universe that you actually want love. I would suggest doing something you're interested in or like going to the gym or something like that. Like think about your the type of person you want. Where would that person be? Go be there. <laughs> Plain and simple, right? And, and, you know, I think that's like probably the easier way to find love. Plus, you're going to find something much better than you would find on like Tinder or something like that, right? So I keep telling people to get out. People say, I don't want to get out. I'm like, okay, well, what type of person do you think you're going to find by not getting out? It's not going to be a good person. I'm telling you that right now. So get out. Get out of the house here, Leo. Get out into public. Go look for something, right? Eight of Cups is walking away from things that no longer serve you. The couch does not serve you. Not right now. It doesn't, right? Uh, this could also be you walking away from the past. I feel like you're cutting things out that just don't fulfill you in general. I am just getting re relationships in general. This could be your relationship to people, places, and things. Like anything that doesn't fulfill you, I feel like you're getting rid of it in a good way. And I feel like you're just focusing on things that fill you up, especially with that Queen of Cups, That things that make you feel fulfilled, things that make you feel happy. So this is beyond love, this Eight of Cups. This is more. With the Four of Wands, uh, Four of Wands is a card of freedom, and it's also a card of marriage. Some of you clearly could be getting married. If you're not getting married, then you could be meeting the person that you will marry in the near future. I, li I literally feel like you could be meeting a person that you will marry this year. Normally, I don't say that because, uh, you know, I just don't, but I do feel you could be, I mean, you have the lovers right next to it. <laughs> so uh, this looks very good to me. And I mean, you know, even if we go this way, you go three of cups, queen of cups, the four of wands. I mean, definitely a really good year for love for you, Leo. You could be meeting someone very, very, very special to you. Or if, if you don't already have this person. With the four of pentacles, you have this concentration card. What you concentrate on is what you're going to receive. It is like another year of manifestation. Again, I keep telling people, Neptune and Pisces is like manifestation on steroids. I've been saying this for years that I think we can manifest things very, very quickly and we need to be careful what we concentrate on so that we get good stuff, not like bad stuff. With the Eight of Cups, you have this inspiration card. I would be focusing on your inspirations as well. And you know, again, we have Pluto going into Aquarius. I've been talking about this for a long time that we have a lot of Aquarius energy coming up. I mean, Pluto is going to be in Aquarius for 20 years. It's going to retrograde out this year, but uh doesn't matter. It, it touched tips with Aquarius, and that's all that counts as far as I'm concerned. That's the beginning. <laughs> and I would be practicing this energy right now. Is Number one, I would be becoming, I would be doing something. You have this poise card. I'd be doing something to be inspirational. This could be like building a business. could be as simple as doing something you've never done before. I would definitely do that, but I would also say that I feel like you need to follow your inspirations, like the things that you feel motivated and excited to do. This could lead to a relationship. It's like maybe you feel like you want to take a cooking class and you want to learn how to cook. You never know. That could be where you meet the love of your life. Maybe you feel inspired to you know, lift heavy weights. Like I said, maybe you go to the gym, maybe you find the love of your life. So I would do it. With the four wands, you have this resistance card and caution card. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you feel resistance to getting married. Maybe you've been married in the past for some of you, I feel intuitively. And, you know, there could be a little resistance to getting married. Is this going to stop you from getting married? No, I don't think so. I think it's just something to think about, um, you know, especially if you meet a person. I keep encouraging people as well. Um, you know, to me, there's a lot in the astrology and just energetically, like when I meditate on the year, I feel like there's, and I, I started talking about this last year as well. I feel like we really need to trust the evidence. Like, you know, if we're meeting a person, what if you're really being honest with yourself? And again, I'm I'm guilty of this too. I'm not saying I'm perfect here, Leo. Far from it, right? It's like I've stayed in so many relationships for too long because I didn't trust the evidence because I didn't look at what was being said, number one, and was right in front of my face, right? So it's like we all do it. I do it, right? Clearly, right? Like I said, I have to learn something 10 times, at least minimum. So, you know, it's like, can you look at your relationships or whatever you're in and what does the evidence tell you? Does it say, yes, this is going to work or no, you're being dumb. <laughs> this isn't going to work, right? And that's what I would do here. 
Uh, finally, in your eighth house of like uh, other people's money, uh, debts, um, intimacy, all those things, death, you have this media card. It says get more publicity to increase your finances. I, I Didn't we talk about this in the beginning? Because you have that, um, what was this card called again? Oh, official person, right? I'm pretty sure we were talking about getting attention or something like that. It says actress, radio host, podcaster, singer, model, any mass media jobs. I mean, pretty much everyone gets this. Again, to me, you know, this is Chris's crappy astrology, but what I'd say is put on Aquarius. And plus we have a bunch of Aquarius energy coming in. What I would say is Aquarius energy is the star card. It wants us to get as much attention as we possibly can. If I were you, I would be trying to get as much attention as I possibly can. Like I said, I, you know, I do these things. Just look at the, the, the crazy stuff I do on uh, social media and stuff like that. Why do you think I do this? I, I do it to get as much attention as I possibly can. <laughs> I don't know. It seems to be working for me. So there you go. You have this angelic help card. It says your angels are blessing you with new opportunities. Yes, I feel like there are definitely new opportunities. I do feel like there are like opportunities to collaborate coming in for you. But this could be like, you know, if you have a business and someone invites you on their podcast or whatever, I would do it because, you know, there could be like a lot of opportunity here. I also do get, I do get like the word collaboration. You have the three of pentacles here, three of cups at the beginning of the reading. You know, if there are any opportunities for you to like collaborate with other people, I feel it could be kind of very, very helpful for you. I'm also getting something about timing here as well as popping into me. Like maybe you've been waiting for these things for a long time. Maybe you've been waiting for people to like invite you on their podcast or help you out or something. And it's like finally happening. You have the Three of Pentacles, the Hermit, and the Lovers. Again, I do feel like you're, this is going to be a very intimate year, let's put it that way. Um, so I feel you could be attracting people who want to be intimate with you. I kind of feel like there's like one person that stands out for, I, I feel like you're getting a lot of attention. I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie here, Leo. I feel like a lot of people want to give you attention. I feel like people, you know, even if we go this way, you have this inspiration card. I feel like a lot of people could be inspired by you. So that could be what's getting you attention. The funny thing is, I also feel like the fact, like if you're walking away from a person, <laughs> I feel like by you walking away from a person, you could be inspiring them. And that could just be, you know, turning them on more because they're like, how dare this person walk away from me? You know, it's kind of like you're taking your power back, which could actually make them more attracted to you. So, you know, take it how it resonates. Um, Interestingly enough, again, I feel like you could be attracting a person who is an inspiration or who is inspirational. Um, or again, maybe you maybe you see a person in your life who takes their power back and maybe you're like, wow, this person has a big set of, you know, you know, you know what's right. And so maybe that's what attracts you to the person in the first place. It could just be like a person you work with or maybe they stand up for themselves or something. There's something like that popping into my head. It's kind of funny because I feel like you didn't see it the first time <laughs> is what I feel like saying. I don't think you dated this person. I think maybe you just like know this person. Maybe you're like, okay, they're attractive. But I don't, it's like some of you could be having one of those moments where someone becomes a lot more attractive to you because they do something, right? Uh, you have the hermit here as well. Um, I kind of feel like you're in this position of uh, developing, um, you know, and that's the word that's popping into my head. I don't know how else to say it. I, the eighth house can be like mysteries and like death as well. So you could be going, I don't think this is a death. I feel you've kind of gone through the darkness and you're, it's almost like you're stepping out into the light, becoming who you truly are. So very powerful, very powerful energy here. You do have the three of pentacles. And again, the eighth house can represent shared resources. So anything you can do to team up with other people, I feel this is gonna be beneficial for you. Uh, you know, again, the eighth house can be other people's money and it can go both ways. It can be money going out or money coming in, right? <laughs> so I feel this is money coming in. And I feel if you're like teaming up with other people, if you have a business, uh, clearly it could be a lot of success for you. Uh, even if you're retired, you know, you could be like teaming up with people on projects. You could be moving in with a person to take the weight off your finances or something like that. Um, all those things would be very beneficial. I also have a story, even if you're not retired, like I have a story popping in my head here that if you are thinking about like, you could be like 20 or something like that. If you're thinking like, oh, I should go move in with my parents or I should go move in with my aunt or my cousin or something like that, I would do it. Cause I feel like, you know, for those of you who are, are maybe younger, even if you're not, Let's just say you're just trying to get back on your feet. I feel like it'll, this, if you're thinking about doing this, yes, very good idea is what I'm trying to spit out of my mouth right now, Leo. I feel it could be something that really, really helps you out, um, you know, in for the long term and really puts you in a good position is what I'm trying to say. With the three of pentacles, see, you have this charity card. I, I feel like someone wants to be helpful for you. I would let people help you is what I would say. Like if someone wants to help you out, someone wants you to move in with them and feel like, hey, I got this extra room. I think it would be really, really good for you, especially if you're trying to get back on your feet or, you know, if, you know, with the economy and all this other stuff, if you're trying to save money, I feel like it'd be like not just helpful right now, but like super helpful in the future because you save money or because you, you got 
you were able to get back on your feet and you were able to find a better job or something like that. I think people don't realize like when we do these things, it's like maybe it's not ideal to move back in with your parents, but at the same time, it's like mentally not being stressed out because you're like scraping by. I think that is super, super helpful, right? Sometimes, um, you know, sometimes I, I think the opposite is true, right? Like I always tell a story, my brother and I years ago, we, we don't live there anymore, but we moved to Seattle and, um, you know, we were like scraping by, <laughs> just making it, right? But it motivated me to get my ass moving. So, you know, I kind of see both sides, but in this situation, I think that someone wants to help you. I feel it could be temporary, totally worth it. With the uh, Hermit, you have this generosity card. Are you kidding? There you go. So someone wants to be generous. Could be you being very generous as well. And I feel like your generosity will be kind of like coming back to you tenfold. With the Lovers, you have this adaptability card. Mm, uh, I feel like you're, you know, here's the thing about love. I kind of felt this at the beginning of the reading that you could be attracting a person where it's like, I feel like they're just like on a line is what I feel like saying. That does not, I don't even know what that means, but what I think it means is that this person is kind of like in a fixed position almost. So you could be attracting someone who's also a fixed sign or maybe they're just like, I feel like they're very, very focused. And if I was being super picky about this reading, if you're attracting this person, I feel like they are like immovable. I feel they are, it's not that they're not flexible. I just think that you would have to be the one to be more flexible, if that makes sense. For some of you, I don't think this is even a problem. I think you're looking for a person who's driven, motivated, focused, and successful. And that's what I'm getting here. For others, I think the challenge here is that maybe um, this person also has goals, wishes, and dreams, things that, I mean, you do as well, is what I'm trying to say, is like maybe you have goals, wishes, and dreams, and it's like your life paths are kind of conflicting a little bit. Um, can this be worked through? Absolutely. I think that's why it's showing up here. I think it's showing up because it's like saying, hey, this is something that can be worked through, but you're going to have to be a little bit adaptable or flexible, right? Uh, that's that. Amazing reading. Uh, we're going to pull five main themes to see what else wants to come up. You have this wheel card says indecisiveness, allowing your life to ramble aimlessly. I feel like this is what you're moving past because I feel like you're much more focused. You have this extremism card at the beginning of your reading, which we were talking about. I kind of feel like you're being more flexible in your ideas as well. It's like maybe normally you would try to like push yourself or your ideas in your business on people or something like that. I don't know, that's what's popping to my head. I'm not saying that you're not, and we should have, we should be allowed to have our own opinions, but I feel like you're just being more flexible. I actually feel pretty good about that card, not bad. Uh, next, you have this younger man card it says dealings or relationships with a younger man, could be younger woman. Again, in these general readings, I don't attach gender to my cards. I always clarify these people cards and you have this January card. So you could be attracting a person in the month of January. So right away, right at the beginning of the, of the year. Um, I also am getting that this could be a person coming into your business if you have a business at the beginning of the year. Um, it might not be a business partner though. It might just be... Um, like a person you share ideas with, like a master mastermind type thing or whatever. I'm choking now. So there you go. But uh, could be in January. Could also be a person born in January, I'm getting. Uh, you have this casket card. It says someone going out of your life or the end of a situation. See, again, I we were talking about maybe like a toxic person kind of at the beginning of the reading. I'm wondering if that's why they're showing up in this reading is because like they're, you're drifting away, they're drifting away. It's kind of like their final, you know, kick or their final <laughs> kind of, I don't know. It's like they're trying to make themselves, you know, important again, like, but they realize it's the end, 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 you know, type of deal here. Uh, you have this uh, carriage card. It says a journey, either physical or mental. I feel like there are going to be a lot of opportunities for you to travel, uh, for you to do things like that. You have this Hills card. It says obstacles to overcome. I feel this has to do with the ideas that we were talking about. It's like, you're, you know, it's, and these are just hills. They're not mountains. Like, I feel like they're just like little things where your first idea doesn't work. That doesn't mean stop. That means keep going, right? Uh, really good reading here, Leo. Love it. Uh, part three will be out soon. So keep an eye out for that. But uh, thank you for being here, Leo. Really appreciate it. Make sure to watch your sun, moon, and rising for a full picture of what's going on for you at this time. But uh, thank you and definitely enjoy your year.